Welcome everybody to today's Transfer Express webinar, Heat Transfer Vinyl versus Screen Printed Transfers. My name is Andy Curtis. I am the Senior Manager of Customer Service and Graphic Design here at Transfer Express. I've been with the company for 18 years, and in that time I have managed everything from the front of the building to the back of the building except for accounting because I, I shouldn't be trusted with the money. So uh, I am here to uh, guide you through the big question of heat transfer vinyl versus screen printed transfers. When should you use which and what are the benefits? Now, we're not going to do a super deep dive here, guys. We're not going to go into a crazy amount of detail. We've only got about 45 minutes to an hour. If you've joined me before, you know that I can go on for a long time. Um, so uh, I don't want to take up uh, a whole bunch of time here. I, we're going to stick to that hour, hour mark at the most. So I'm not going to deep dive into the real nitty gritty. I want to give you an overview, though. I want you to come away with the basic knowledge of the differences between these products and when you should use each one. But before we get into all that stuff, I want to uh, welcome you guys. If you've never joined us before, then thank you for joining us today. You will find there is a chat box, which everybody has located, it looks like. Uh, as we are going today, I encourage you to pop any questions you have into the chat box, and I will do my best to answer them as we go. Now, if I happen to miss a question, uh, and if you've joined me before, you know, like I said, I talk a lot. Um, so if I do happen to miss a question, my helper behind the curtain will pop in there and answer it for me. And uh, he uh, just said hello a second ago. So... Uh, keep an eye out for him. If uh, I don't answer your question, he will. Um, the webinar is being recorded too. So uh, if you do happen to miss uh, something, if you have to go, or if uh, uh, you're only able to be here for part of it, the recording will be posted on our website at a later date. So uh, the webinar is being recorded. Um, and uh, if you would like a copy of the webinar slides, you are welcome to uh, shoot us an email, info at transferexpress.com, and we can shoot you a copy of the webinar slides too. So, all right. So with that being said, um, <laughs> input right off the bat, Paul, make sure you discuss weeding. Definitely. We're going to talk about what weeding means, and we're going to talk about, uh, I, I've, I've got some pictures too, so you can see what, what that means. So, um, all right, so without any further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started with heat transfer, heat transfer vinyl versus screen printed transfers. So the first question that we need to answer here is, what exactly is heat transfer vinyl? So first of all, if you ever see the abbreviation HTV, um, I, I know that there's a certain TV channel that sounds very similar to that, but when you see HTV, HTV stands for heat transfer vinyl. And heat transfer vinyl is a type of vinyl used to decorate apparel, bags, and other soft goods. Basically, heat transfer vinyl is a roll of vinyl film that can be cut out and applied to a garment. So that's a real broad definition. But what I want everyone to understand is that heat transfer vinyl comes in a whole bunch of different types and, and, and colors and styles and finishes and textures. And you can buy heat transfer vinyl that is, uh, you know, puffy and metallic and holographic and all sorts of different colors and, and uh, different mattes and shinies and metallic this is and uh, all sorts of stuff. There's there's tons of different types of heat transfer vinyl out there. So while we give this a very simple definition, it is a very broad topic, a very uh, very broad list of different things that fall under that category of heat transfer vinyl. But essentially, at the end of the day, heat transfer vinyl is any vinyl that you can cut and then apply to some kind of soft good, whether it's apparel or a bag or anything else soft and flat that you can fit into a heat press, right? Um, so I, most of you guys, I'm gonna bet you that most of you guys probably have used heat transfer vinyl. Um, I'm gonna bet that uh, out of the those of you watching, there's probably a bunch of you that have crickets at home and silhouettes at home. Uh, heat transfer vinyl, a good example of heat transfer vinyl is the, uh, the vinyl that you cut on your Cricut or your Silhouette. 
Uh, it might not come in a roll, like in my photograph here, uh, the heat transfer vital might come in sheets that you purchase to put through your cricket or your silhouette. Um, but uh, the sheets still, uh, that's heat transfer vinyl, whether it comes in a roll or not. <laughs> Christine says the high school students love the weeding process. Uh, is You know what? Uh, hire them, Christine. <laughs> let's, let's get a production line going because not, not a lot of people enjoy the weeding process. But we'll get to that in a second here. So that's what heat transfer vinyl is, a type of vinyl used to decorate apparel, bags, and other soft goods. Um, so to continue on with this idea of what is heat transfer vinyl, so to use heat transfer vinyl, like I said before, you have to cut it. So it comes in a roll usually, or sheets, like I said, if you're using a cricket or a silhouette, sometimes you can buy sheets of these. But um, the point is you have to cut heat transfer vinyl. So to be able to use it, you have to have a cutter of some kind. So you can have a, a real nice big graph tech cutter. You can have a roll and desktop. Or, of course, there is the cricket and the silhouette. I, I feel like we could call the last five years the cricket silhouette revolution. <laughs> um, it uh, went, Crickets and silhouette went from being just a, a thing that barely anybody had to something that seems like everybody, everybody has a cricket or a silhouette these days, right? Um, so a Roland or a graph tech, for those of you who are maybe a little bit more on the crafter side of things, maybe you do have a cricket or a silhouette, Rollins and graph techs are the same concept, just sort of the bigger, bulkier, more heavy duty cousin, more bells and whistles, uh, more capabilities, uh, quicker speed, that sort of thing. So um, the graph tech uh, photograph is the one that's at my top left here. That's that's the heavy duty cutter. That's, that's the quick one. That's the one that's more geared towards uh, lots of production. Uh, the Roland there is the one on the right, a little more portable. Um, able to sort of move that guy around a little bit more, uh, perhaps a little bit longer lasting, a little more reliable than a cricket or a silhouette, a little more heavy duty. But at the end of the day, you understand they all basically do the same thing. And you know what? So uh, when Eric's asking a good question here, so which is better for a clothing brand? At the end of the day, Eric, honestly, all of these cutters are going to accomplish the same thing. There's not one cutter that is better for creating clothing than another one. Um, at the end of the day, you just need to make sure you have a cutter. Keep in mind that if you have one of the crickets or the silhouettes, those are meant to be craft cutters. So they're not necessarily as heavy duty as a Roland or a Graph Tech. Um, but uh, the Rolands and Graph Techs, they're a little bit more expensive. So it's one of those where you sort of got to, you got to balance it out a little bit. How much money you got? How often are you going to use this cutter? If it's going to sit and gather dust, then all right, you don't want to go with one of the expensive ones. But if you think you're going to use it all the time, then you're going to want one that's a little bit more uh, able to be beat up. So, um, so continuing on with this theme of what is heat transfer vinyl, after you've cut the heat transfer vinyl, this is what people were talking about. Somebody was asking about this already. So uh, after you've cut your heat transfer vinyl, you need to weed the heat transfer vinyl. So when we say weed, we're not talking about those things that grow in the flower beds. When we say weed, we mean you have to pull off all the excess vinyl. So if you see what's happening here, the lady in the picture here is weeding a name. So they've cut a name into this heat transfer vinyl film and the, the letters have been cut, but now you have to pull off all the extra film. So all you leave behind is the letters. That process is weeding. So I, I see there's some notes about some uh, issues with the sound going in and out. For those of you that are having sound issues, I really am sorry about that. We are recording though. So if, if you do miss this because there's gonna be a sound issue, uh, the webinar is going to be posted. So you will, you will be able to go see it on the website. So sorry about that guys. I'm not sure why the sound is going in and out here, but um, okay, so uh, like I said, once you have cut your heat transfer vinyl, the next step is to weed it out. This is the process that's a little bit more time intensive. Uh, this is going to take, you know, like if you're doing a team of uh, 20 kids doing names for the back of all 20 baseball jerseys, it's going to take time. you got to cut all of those names, but then you have to weed each of the names. And uh, weeding is just one of those things where some people love weeding, some people don't love weeding. 
Um, it, it can be a process that can be very, uh, I've, I have employees that find it soothing, actually. It's a task that you can quietly do. Um, it's one of those things that uh, you either hate it or you love it. And there are people who, who really can't stand the time that it takes to do this. Um, at the end of the day, though, most films are easy to weed. You grab an edge and you just peel. There are some films you have to be a little bit more careful, a little more fragile, and you can't yank too hard. Otherwise, the edges of the letters will come up, too. Um, <laughs> see, Christine says it's very relaxing. Sarah says she likes weeding, too. See, I, I personally, I don't mind weeding. Um, weeding is one of those tasks that I, I can sit there and quietly do. I can put on some music and I can jam out by myself and weed things. It's a nice excuse to sit and take a deep breath for a second, right? <laughs> um, maybe that's just me. I don't know. Uh, but this is what the weeding process is. Now, keep in mind that um, for everything you cut on your cutter, you have to sit there and weed it. And this is where people to get very strategic about how they cut, because if you if you are smart with your space, oh, see, there's one. I knew we were gonna have somebody. Maureen, Maureen doesn't like weeding. I, I feel you, Maureen. Um, you have to be smart about your space because you paid for that roll of vinyl or those sheets of vinyl. And if you're not uh, if you're not careful, you can waste a lot of that vinyl. Uh, by wasting space. So what you when you do cut things, you want to make sure that you like if, if you're going to cut a bunch of names, you want to put them close together as close together as you can. So you don't waste uh, you don't waste as much vinyl as you could possibly save. You know what I mean? So uh, that's another one of those tricky things about heat transfer vinyl is that you got to maximize your space. You got to be careful about, you know, how much you use and, and what exactly you're doing with it. Um, for those of you, a, a fun little uh, vocabulary word, <laughs> there'll be a test tomorrow. A fun vocabulary word is nesting. Nesting is the idea that you uh, nest, you fit a bunch of images all close up against one another. So when you run that cut file, you're maximizing the amount of film that you use. So nesting is one of those things. So it's a puzzle. Sarah is totally right. It's a puzzle. Um, fit everything together the best that you can, right? You paid for it, so get the most bang for your buck that you possibly can. Oh, James, there you go. Charge the customer for the wastage. That's a strategy too. That that comes down to how you run your business though. So that's definitely a good idea. Okay, so uh, continuing on with what is heat transfer vinyl? After you have cut your heat transfer vinyl, then you've weeded your heat transfer vinyl, then you apply your heat transfer vinyl to a garment using a heat press. So now, Applying heat transfer vinyl is very simple, quick and painless. Usually there are some vinyls that tug a little bit when you go to peel off the carrier, they like to tug a little bit. You got to be careful. You always got to make sure you follow the directions too. every heat transfer vinyl is different, just like every transfer type is different. So you got to be careful with which type you use for what. Uh, always be cognizant of what your garment is made out of and make sure you've checked to make sure that heat transfer vinyl goes on that type of garment. Um, but the more important thing that I want to note here, the thing that makes the heat transfer vinyl uh, very unique in terms of decoration, if you're doing a multicolor design, so the design in my picture here is a uh, glitter design. Um, it's a, a football design, okay, uh, North Central. So this is just one color. If somebody wanted to do a multicolor and they wanted to use two shades of glitter, or maybe they were going to do the white glitter and they wanted to, you know, put some kind of, football in that uh, rectangle that you see in my picture there. Um, that would be a second step. It's not all one application. You'd have to put down the white vinyl first, and then you press it, peel it, then you put down the next piece of vinyl on top, cover it, press it, and peel it. So if you're doing a multicolor vinyl design, it can be a little bit of a pain because you've got to go through and you've got to make sure that uh, you're cutting each different color is a different piece that you're cutting and you have to apply each piece individually and you have to be very careful when you line them up. Um, I, I personally am not real great at kind of thing. I don't have a good eye for that. I, I get scared when I have to do multicolor uh, vinyl designs. I get nervous that I'm, I'm going to mess up, uh, uh, not line them up properly. And there's so much time that goes into that. Um, so uh, lining up lining up layers of heat transfer vinyl is a skill in and of itself. Um, 
but uh, so that's that's what happens. And again, that's only for multicolor. If you're going to do a single color heat transfer vinyl, then obviously you're not lining up, you know, different layers. You just put the piece down, press it, peel it, done. So if that's what heat transfer vinyl is, then we need to answer the question of what is a screen printed transfer, right? Because the whole point of this webinar is heat transfer vinyl versus screen printed transfers. So what is a screen printed transfer? A screen printed transfer is plastisol ink printed through a screen onto release paper. So again, I've given you a very broad definition uh, or a very basic definition for a very broad spectrum of products here. So plastisol ink pressed through a screen onto release paper, quick definition, but there's tons of different types of transfers out there, just like the heat transfer vinyl. There's glitter transfers and puff transfers. There's uh, elastic transfers to go on stretchy stuff. There's basic screen print transfers. So uh, a very important buzzword here, a very important vocabulary word. This is on the vocabulary test, folks. A very important vocabulary word is plastisol. Plastisol is the kind of ink that is used in screen printing. If you are a science nerd, plastisol is one of those chemicals that's just interesting because plastisol stays liquid for years at a time until it's heated to a certain point then it becomes solid and the name plastisol gives you that indication that when it does dry it it has sort of a it's like a relative of plastic basically it's sort of its distant cousin so it hardens basically into a into a durable form so plastisol is that ink that is on all of the screen printed t-shirts in your closet plastisol has been around for forever Every basic screen printer, every uh, screen printer who's your regular run-of-the-mill screen printer uses Plastisol. Now, there are other options out there. As time is going by, water-based ink is becoming a more viable option. We actually make water-based transfers here at Transfer Express, too. But uh, water-based is different than Plastisol, where instead of it being a Plastisol-based ink that has those uh, plastics in it, water-based is... Uh, dye that is suspended in water molecules, basically. But that's that's a different webinar and a different presentation. <laughs> um, uh, so James asks a good question here. Are you guys still doing transfers by the gang sheet or can we purchase one-off prints yet? James, no, we don't do one-off screen printed transfers. Uh, screen printed transfers, you have to have a minimum quantity of five to 10 pieces. And we're gonna actually touch on that in just a hot second here. Um, so very, very good question. We do have a type of transfer that can be printed uh, or purchased one off though. That would be our ultra color soft. <clears throat> All right, so uh, moving on with that question of what is a screen printed transfer? So after you have purchased your screen printed transfer and you do that by sending us your artwork, telling us how many pieces, how many colors, what exactly you need, we send you the screen printed transfer ready to go on that release paper, meaning if you're doing a two color, like you see in my, my picture here, we're printing a Cleveland Rocks t-shirt with the Cleveland skyline. It's uh, maroon and gold. And you see that those two colors are on that one sheet of paper. There's no weeding involved. There's no multi-steps of lining up two pieces of film. There's no need to uh, bust out the T-square or the ruler or, or try to get things lined up. It's all on one piece of paper. So not only do you get that plastisol ink that is the same ink that every screen printer uses, but you're getting it in a one-step application where you don't have to weed off any excess and you don't have to line up any uh, extra colors. So this is what makes screen printer transfer so beautiful is that it's a very quick wham, bam, done process. Um, and uh, now coming up here, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the differences between why you would use heat transfer vinyl why you would use screen printed transfers. So I want to point out here that I'm not saying heat transfer vinyl is not a totally viable, fantastic product, because it certainly is. I love heat transfer vinyl. There's certain things you can do with heat transfer vinyl you can't do with transfers. But the point is one of the benefits of transfers versus heat transfer vinyl, screen printed transfers, you get all the colors together like this and there is no weeding. So Freddie has a question. Honestly, does the quality or durability of the ink change uh, from being screen printed on paper to being directly to the garment? Freddie, that is a phenomenal question, and I didn't include that slide in my deck. So there, there you go. Good, good job, Freddie. So the question is, does it change in terms of quality? And the answer is no. 
Uh, the quality of a screen printed transfer versus direct screen printing is exactly the same. So the products that we have at Transfer Express go through a very vigorous testing process. All of our products go through 50 wash and 50 dry cycles to ensure that they do not get damaged during that time. So again, the same type of quality in a direct screen printing job. Now, it should be pointed out that at some point in time, all screen printing does begin to crack. Good screen printing lasts longer, obviously, but all screen print does begin to crack eventually. That's something that uh, the heat transfer vinyls generally don't do that. They may start to peel over time, and again, the good ones don't. Uh, but the point is that screen printer transfers, any screen printing at all, does begin to crack after a certain amount of wear and tear, though. If you have good screen printing, that doesn't begin to happen until the garment itself starts to wear out. And that tends to be the case with our, with our products at Transfer Express. <clears throat> Laura brings up a good point here, too, actually. One of the other differences between these products is that when you're doing screen printed transfers, like in the picture here, Screen printed transfers have an issue. Uh, if you try to print something too small, if you've got really tiny text or really tiny artwork, um, it's kind of like going back to high school physics, right, Laura? When you press a transfer, a screen printed transfer, the heat and the pressure from the press causes the ink to want to expand. So if you've got really tiny text or really tiny artwork, then the heat will cause the ink to expand and will make those tiny things close up. Now, it should be noted that we're talking really tiny, right? Like the minimum space for something to be show through is 0 0.04 inches thick. So we're talking tiny. Um, and to that effect, you should remember that cutting heat transfer vinyl that small, Laura, is also a huge challenge. So at the end of the day, do you want to try to cut that heat transfer vinyl? And technically, depending on how small it is, you might not even be able to cut heat transfer vinyl that small. Um, or do you do the screen print? So there's, there's still challenges for that tiny stuff either way, right? All right. So let's talk about when to use what. Uh, because I, I, like I said before, I want to make it clear that I am by no means saying that one of these products is superior to the other because there are definitely times when both of these are really the best option to go with. So uh, for example, heat transfer vinyl uses, when you're making gifts or any any kind of one-off material, uh, when you're doing any kind of, you know, I just need two pieces of this or one piece of this, heat transfer vinyl is definitely the better way to go. Um, somebody, as somebody asked earlier, screen print transfers have a minimum. Uh, screen printed transfers don't really start to get cost effective until you get into that 15, 20, 25 piece range. Um, so you don't want to you don't want to do one offs with the screen printed transfers because you have to buy that minimum. Where if you have a cutter and heat transfer vinyl, you can make just one piece. So super, super simple. Um, these are also great when you're doing test marketing. When you want to make a design to see if people like it, to see if people would buy it, when you just want to see, okay, well, we're going to give this a whirl and, and, and see what people think of it. Uh, heat transfer vinyl is nice for that too, because again, it's a quick and simple one-off. Um, if you're doing under five pieces, under five, you definitely want to do heat transfer vinyl. No two ways about it. Under five pieces, that's the way to go. If you're doing five to 10 pieces, then it kind of depends on the job. So if you look at the picture here on my slide, Sedona with the number 33 in the ball, at the end of the day, this is an easy design to do the heat transfer vinyl and to weed off without any craziness. The design itself is very simple, the football with the 33 in it. Um, and frankly, actually, heat transfer vinyl, again, is the best way to do this design. You can assume that that number 33 is this one player's number, right? So you don't want a whole bunch of Sedona 33s. Every player wants his number on his football, right? Screen printing, you can't do that. With the screen printed transfers, you would have to order a minimum number of Sedona 33. And then you'd have to order a minimum number of whoever has the number 50 and then whoever has the number 60 and so on and so forth. So you, you have those minimums to contend with. Um, so not only is this design easy to weed, uh, but it's also uh, very much one that you would want to do the heat transfer vinyl because you can't do those one-offs with the screen print. Um, but my point being here, if you did have somebody, let's say the high school themselves wanted to order Sedona with the football 
and didn't have the player number in it, just Sedona with the football, and they only wanted five pieces, that wouldn't be an out of the question designed to do with heat transfer vinyl. Because at the end of the day, this isn't crazy weeding. So uh, again, when you're doing five to 10 pieces, it depends on how difficult the job is. If you do have intricate artwork, crazy detail, then all right, maybe you go screen printing instead, even though it's only five to 10 pieces. The other thing that you just, you cannot beat heat transfer vinyl when you're doing instant names and numbers. Um, so one of the nice things about heat transfer vinyl is if you buy a roll, of the, uh, the rolled goods, if you actually buy a roll of heat transfer vinyl, you can print, uh, cut rather, you can cut the name and the number together um, and this is great uh, because it's one application. You don't have to get out any kind of T-squares or rulers to make sure your spacing is right. It's quick and simple, wham, bam, done. Uh, the other thing that's cool is when you have your own cutter there, you can do a lot of different names and numbers too. You're not limited to what might be in stock. Um, names and numbers are a great heat transfer vinyl item for sure. It gives you a lot of control. There's a lot of different stuff you can do uh, to where if you have the screen printed names and numbers, the screen print transfers, they're fantastic, but you're, you're limited to the stock numbers and the stock designs that we have available. Um, and, and then also they don't come together in one application. It's very simple to put them together, but the point is it takes an extra couple seconds to do that to where the heat transfer vinyl, you can have one step there. So then the same question, when is it best to use a screen printed transfer? It's best to use a screen printed transfer when your quantity is over 10. So looking at both of the designs that I have here on this screen, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette, or even if you have a, a Roland cutter at home uh, or in your shop, you could totally cut either of these designs, this Yorkshire University or this Riverview High School. Technically, you could cut either one of these with vinyl. That Yorkshire University might be a little harder. There's some more detail in there, but the point is you could do it, right? But if you had a customer, if your customer wanted to order 10 or 15 of these, you're not going to want to do that then. That would be a lot of cutting and that would be lining up a lot of vinyl. That Riverview High School one on the right-hand side, that might be a little bit easier since the colors don't touch. Um, if you uh, press down the yellow first and then peel and then you press down the blue, um, again, if you were doing it as heat transfer vinyl, you, you could pull that off. But the point is, when you're doing 10, 15 of these things, you don't want to line up all those different colors. You don't want to weed all of that vinyl. It becomes very painstaking. So this is where screen printed transfers are fantastic because there is no extra step. You grab the transfer, you press, you go, wham, bam, done. There's no extra steps. There's no lining anything up, but lining up the transfer, but not lining up the colors with one another. Um, so again, very simple. Uh, Laura's got a good question here. Can you do the QTK94 as a goof proof without a clear coat around the edges? Uh, so the answer to that, Laura, is yes. Uh, the goof proof transfers don't require the clear coat. Uh, so you would do that goof proof and that wouldn't be a problem. Um, but the point here is that uh, these designs, while you could cut them with heat transfer vinyl, much easier as screen printed transfers, especially when your customer needs 10, 15, 20, 25 pieces. If they only needed five pieces or less than that, one or two pieces, then sure, heat transfer vinyl. But uh, when you're going above, uh, you're going 10 or more and more complicated designs, you definitely want to do the screen printed transfers. And again, to that point of detail, so here are two designs that you definitely do not want to do heat transfer vinyl. There is just, there's no way you're going to be able to do either of these designs. Now, the one on the left are actually signatures and the signatures happen because you can uh, get a template from us here at Transfer Express. You have the students sign the template and then we screen print the signatures based on that template. So. Um, not something you can do with heat transfer vinyl. Now, the one on the right-hand side, uh, technically that's just a plain list of names, but again, the weeding for that would be horrendous. Nobody, nobody wants to do that, right? Um, definitely, definitely not easy. So uh, the screen printed transfer is definitely better when you've got a lot of detail. Now, again, like I said earlier, there is a limit to that detail. Um, you, when you 
have something that is very tiny, uh, the minimums for a show through area is 0 0.04 inches thick. And the minimum for a printed line is 0 0.012 inches thick. So uh, still some minimums, but much, much smaller minimums than with the heat transfer vinyl. <clears throat> and again, like I said earlier, more than one color. So when you're doing, uh, when you're doing multicolors, you could use the heat transfer vinyl, but again, you've got to remember that you have to line up those multiple colors with one another. And if it's something simple like that number 22 there, our Caro and a 22, that, that's not bad. I mean, lining up a number 22, that's quick and simple, sure. But if you look at some of the designs that some of these kids are wearing, those more intricate designs, lining those two colors up with the heat transfer vinyl, definitely not easy. So at the end of the day, it kind of comes down to, okay, so how many colors is it? And how difficult is it going to be for me to sit there and line those colors up by hand, right? So uh, definitely something to think about. So again, one of the places that heat transfer, uh, the rather the screen printed transfers went out when it comes to doing more than one color. And we can take that a step further, uh, not just more than one color, but let's talk about full color, right? So the design in the middle here, you could feasibly do that. Like that, that design has an embroidered effect to it. If you got rid of that embroidered effect, you could cut a whole slew of heat transfer vinyl to do all those rainbow colors, uh, the one in the middle there. But man, that would be a lot of vinyl to cut. And that would be a lot of effort to line all those colors up to where using our ultra color soft transfers, it's just one application. Everything is lined up for you and it's not a problem. So again, this is where the, the transfers definitely went out because it does make it a much quicker process. Um, technically, any of these designs, you could accomplish one way or another with heat transfer vinyl. But again, we're talking a lot of difficulty in lining colors up. And technically the one on the left there, I, I don't know that you could do that with heat, heat transfer vinyl because of the number of colors in there. Um, that would be a lot of layering, uh, and that would be a, a lot of vinyl on top of vinyl. It doesn't seem like a great idea. Uh, so when you do have something that does have a whole lot of colors, this is when we suggest our ultra color soft transfers. So for those who aren't familiar, I just want to throw it out there. Uh, we're, we've been talking about screen printed transfers. The ultra color soft is actually a hybrid product. It, it is uh, taking a bed of screen print ink and then printing full color on top of it. So you get the texture of screen print, but you get the full color digital printing. Uh, that means it doesn't matter how many colors you have. It doesn't matter how fine the design is. So uh, it's, a, it's a fantastic because previously full color products would be uh, full color digitally printed onto a piece of vinyl which is still very viable, but then it feels very thick. It can be a little ungainly to wear. To wear the Ultra Color Soft, being that it's printed on that bed of screen printing is much softer, much nicer to the touch, doesn't feel like you're wearing something heavy. So it takes the, yeah, Kevin, a hybrid product. It takes the best of both worlds, the best of the digital world with the digital colors and the best of the screen print texture and mixes it all together, so. So this is something I want to throw out there to everybody. Um, we have an ebook that we've just released here uh, that is a Profit Guide Ultra Color Soft. Um, this is a, a, a slick ebook that tells you when it's good to use the Ultra Color Soft, what it's best to be used for, um, how to price it. There's a whole bunch of useful information in here. I encourage everybody if you if you think you're going to do full color transfers, and again, full color is anything that's photographic or 3D in nature that has fading and shading details in it. Uh, if you think you have any use for full color transfers, I would definitely download this. It's free, you don't have to pay for it. it it's a great guide to utilizing our Ultra Color Soft. Uh, this is a product we've seen grow by leaps and bounds here in the last couple months. The customers are absolutely loving it so far. Um, the texture is fantastically soft and it's very easy to use. And you can order small quantities of little pieces without breaking the bank. So that's beautiful too. 
So I saw a couple people ask um, your, your questions. I've been going by so quickly, guys. I saw a couple people ask, when should I use which product? So regardless of when you're talking about the heat transfer vinyl or the screen printed transfers, always, always, always feel free to call up and ask. Our sister company, Stalls ID Direct, they specialize in the heat transfer vinyl. Uh, if you're not sure what type to use, call them up and ask them. If you're doing screen printed transfers with us here at Transfer Express, call us up and ask us. Uh, we will absolutely walk you through which product to use in which situation. And most of the time, guys, it comes down to what type of fabric you're applying to, how many colors is in the artwork that you're doing, and then we can help walk you through it. Uh, Sarah, you're asking, can ultra color be one off? Um, they can't quite be one off, but they can be very small quantities, yes. Um, and uh, Bridget's asking, cycle meaning how many washes? Uh, so we test all of our products through 50 wash and dry cycles. So wash, then dry, that's one cycle. Wash, then dry, that's another cycle. Wash, then dry, that's a third cycle. <laughs> oh, thank you, Dee. Uh, our customer service here at Transfer Express, we do our best to walk you guys through whatever project you're working on. If you call us up and you tell us what you're trying to accomplish, we will give you the answers. You gotta have some of the information though. If you don't know what you're working with, then we can't really help you so much. But if you call us up and tell us what type of shirts are you working on? What does the artwork look like? How many colors does it have? We can walk you through what transfer type is best. There are a lot of different transfers out there and it can certainly be very confusing. When you go to upload your artwork or you go to use our online design tool, you're going to be presented with a list of transfer types. And it can be very, uh, it can be very intimidating. So when you do those things, feel free to call us up beforehand or call us up while you're doing it. We'll walk you through it. Okay, everybody, we uh, cleared that in 40 minutes. That might be a personal best for me, I think. Um, <laughs> so 40 minutes, we didn't do bad, right? We covered a whole lot of information here. And if there's nothing else that I want everybody to understand. It's that our, our industry is so cool in that there are so many ways to decorate a garment. There are so many ways to approach any project that you have. There will be times when it will be difficult to select between heat transfer vinyl and screen printed transfers. There's benefits to both products. And there will be times where you sit there and go, well, gosh, I really can do either one, you know? So at the end of the day, both products are fantastic. I, I will tell you guys straight up that if you want to do glitter, for example, the, the heat transfer vinyl glitter that Stalls carries is phenomenal. The glitter flake is so cool. So cool. That stuff is slick. Our glitter product at Transfer Express is great too. I love it. But the glitter flake at Stalls, the heat transfer vinyl is so neat. Um, so if I was going to do a small run of glitter today, I would definitely go to heat transfer vinyl for that. They've also got holographic vinyls that I can't do. Uh, I can't do that effect with screen print. So there are times where even I, uh, somebody who works at Transfer Express and has spent his whole career in screen printing, there's times when vinyl is the coolest thing to me, you know? So there's absolutely times when uh, both products are viable. So uh, absolutely, um, absolutely, if you ever need help, if you ever find yourself going, well, gosh, I really don't know which way to go. I don't know which product to use. I'm sort of confused. Don't ever hesitate to call us up and we'll walk you through how we can help you. We'll walk you through how to do any project you can possibly need. Okay, guys, lots of information. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to email us info at transferexpress.com. Uh, you can also please, please hit our blog blog.transferexpress.com. Uh, these webinars that we do for you, a lot of them come from blog topics. So take a second to read our blog. It is updated constantly. Our marketing department puts out fresh and hot information. We've actually won awards for our blog, as a matter of fact. So go check our blog out. Um, we've got videos at transferexpress.com backslash webinars. That's where this one will go up. We've got all of our past webinars too. Kevin, I saw you said your mind was blown. You should see some of the other webinars. <laughs> Uh, yes, Terry, this webinar will be there later. Absolutely. Um, and uh, please do hit us up on uh, Facebook if you have any questions. Also, uh, we would love to talk to you on Facebook. 
and give us a call. Our reps are uh, eager to talk to you and walk you through any of your projects. So thank you everybody for joining me today. I appreciate your time and uh, have a fantastic rest of your Thursday.